Okay, um, seven point four parallel lines and proportional parts. Um, new part, new vocabulary, mid segment of a triangle. All right, um, we've done this before. This is the middle part of the triangle. There is a way of finding it, and you are going to use proportional parts in order to find that. All right, so now we're moving on to uh, proportions within triangles. Okay, and as you can see here. The moment that you put an extra segment in, which you can do, it's quite okay, you've got parallel lines. So start looking for other parts of triangles, remember? And as you can see in example one, everything is the same as you've been doing. You need to find your proportion, put it into whatever it is. In this case, the put PS, but you, if you want to do whatever variable, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, it's up to you. All right, cross multiply, simplify, and you will finish up with your your length that they are requiring okay so for this question question number one i'm going to keep the letters in order to start off with but you still need your ratio and proportion so you want your xm over your xn and that must equal my over nz and don't forget you're trying to find you're eventually going to come to x, y. You want to know that total distance. So now let's substitute in. You've got 4 over 6 equals. We don't know what m, y is, so keep it as m, y, and that's 9. Cross multiply, you've got 6 m, y. And I'm putting that parentheses because it's actually a distance, and that equals 36. So m, y must equal 6. Okay. Well, you found m y so this guy is six we know this guy is four just put them together four plus six so x y will equal four plus six which will give you a distance of ten make sure you do all of it okay the converse of triangle proportion theory here's where you are trying to prove that this line d e is parallel to g h okay so what you've got to do is actually prove it um, and what you you will be given some bit of information okay well in theory your answer's got to be yes or no but you know by now you can't just say yes or no you have to say the reasons why okay so if you do the right hand side um, you will work out that it's actually a third which is what was given here all right so this part of it is what was given you've got to work out the rest well you don't know what G dg is or gf but you know it's one third of that so put it in proportion so there's your second proportion and since both equal each other you can prove that it is parallel okay so let's have a look at question three um your first mistake you'll see in, in both of these question three and question four is they're not example three they're actually example two so make sure you realize that. Okay, so let's have a look at your proportion. Um, what do you know? Well, you know that BE is six. Okay, let's make your fraction straight away. And BC, the whole distance, is nine. Okay, let's simplify that down and you will get two thirds. All right, now let's do the left-hand side. AD, we know AD is eight. And we also know that DC equals 12. Does that simplify down to two thirds? Yes, it does. So both of these are two thirds. So your answer is yes. But here's your proof. You have to prove it first. You can't just say yes or no, or it looks like it. Prove it mathematically. Right, the triangle mid segment theorem. Okay, um, the mid segment is the bit you're after, it's half the distance. Okay, so depending on which way you're working it out, you've got to work out which way it comes. So, for instance, this guy wants XZ. Well, XZ is this guy, which is the mid segment, it's half of this. Okay, so if XZ is the mid segment of RT, then it must be half of the value of RT. Here's the mathematics that prove it, but basically 6.5 is all you need. The part B top part. Okay, now we're looking at this side of the triangle. It wants to know what ST is. Well, here you are given the mid segment. It tells you that the mid segment is 7. So just doubling up that. So if the mid segment is 7, the longer side must be 14. All right, so here's where we're going now. 
okay, with this. This says that if this is the mid segment and this is the main distance, then these two guys must be parallel, okay? Because what we're trying to find is angle RYX. Um, so angle RYX is this guy here, okay? Well, if you've got parallel lines here, you've got alternate interior angles. So look for things like that. So if this is 124, your alternate angle must also be 124. So look for what you had in chapter four. All right, so here's question number five, um, JH. JH is the mid-segment. So this guy is the mid-segment of that. You know that the mid-segment needs to be half of the full length. So it's just basically 22 divided by two, which will give you a distance of 11. Simple, easy math. All right, so this is the next big topic, parallel lines, all right? The moment you see parallel lines and you know that they've got to be designated unless you can prove them by using the converse, then start looking for other things. Same side, alternate interior, consecutive, exterior, etc., etc. all right? But again, you can put them into a proportion that will equal each other. So once you've done that, then your work starts. Okay, and then using real world examples of question of example number four, all right, using proportional segments of transversals. This is like an artist drawing the vanishing point, and everything must be in your lines in proportion. So, um, in this case, the quadrilateral ABCD must be in proportion to W, X, Y, and Z. Uh, you've got to prove what it is. Okay, so you will be given. So make sure you read the statements. Within the statements, you'll be given enough information to be able to do it. Okay, in theory, A, B, and D, C, and it gives you that, and it gives you one of the other quadrilateral. So again, you can put things in proportion, which is what they've done here, substituting in. Okay, solving and simplifying. Don't forget, you must simplify. And again, the one thing that we need to, which we haven't seen much just lately, um, if you are given um, whatever the units are, you must quote them within your answer. All right, from the diagram, you were told that from 3rd Avenue to 5th Avenue is 1,056, um, and from... 3rd Avenue to 5th Avenue going towards Union Street is 1,062. What else does it tell you? From 3rd Avenue to the City Mall along State Street, so this distance then gives you 3201. And the question's asking you find the distance between 5th Avenue and the City Mall. So what they're asking you to find is that distance and that distance only. So be careful of the question. So right, let's start putting your proportion in. Put the smaller over the bigger. So you've got 1056, and that needs to go over 1162. And what have you been given? Your 3201 over um, the whole thing. So in theory, it's x plus 1162. But let's just leave that one out for the moment. Let's do your cross multiplying, okay? If you cross multiply, you get uh, 1056x, and that must equal the multiplication of 3201 and 1162, which is 3719562. And then you're going to divide through by 1056, and you will get x equals 3522. Point three. Let's just do one decimal point, okay? Well, in theory, that's not x. That's x plus that 1162. Don't forget that's that plus that 1162. Well, we want x on its own, so x is going to equal 3522.3. Subtract the 1162. And you're finishing up with x is going to equal... 2360.3 feet. Okay, don't forget the units. All right, so here's example five, real world. Look at what you've got. First and foremost, you've got three parallel lines, but what else have you got? Two congruent segments. So if those two 
segments are congruent, so are these two guys. Okay, can't, can't have parallel lines and not have congruent segments. So, looking at what you've got, these two guys will equal each other, so will these two guys equal each other. Now we're using algebra instead of numbers or letters, um, so make sure that you do as much as you have to do. Here we're solving for x and y, which is fairly okay. So it's just basic algebra, put in two expressions to make a, an equation, solving for whatever the variable is, okay? Be careful. All right, so here we've got, we've got the same parallel lines again, look, and we've got our two congruent segments. So now you can put things together. So we can do 20 minus 3x must equal 2x minus 5. You know me by now, I always take the smallest variable to the biggest, so I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So 20 equals 5x minus 5. Add 5 to both sides, so 5x is going to equal 25. Divide through by 5, x equals 5. Got the answer, all right? Now we can do the same with the y's. Um, so we can do that 3y equals a half y plus 20. And you know me, I like to get rid of fractions, so multiply everything by 2. So 6y equals just the 1y, remember? And we need to double the 20, that's going to give you 40. Subtract y from both sides, so that's 5y equals 40. Divide through by 5, so y equals 8.